On today's episode, we discuss the possible connections between different street organizations and the Bay State as a whole, with a special look at Fall River. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. So lately, I've been getting slammed with requests. A lot of people want me to talk about different Massachusetts cities. When I was looking at these requests, one viewer brought something to my attention. It was very interesting. Apparently, some of the street organizations that operate down the South Coast Fall River area are very similar to the ones that operate in Lowell, Massachusetts. The viewer claimed that the two cities might even be connected criminally. I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about Fall River street politics. I'm not even that familiar with the city itself. I think the only time I've actually ever been to Fall River is to stay overnight in one of the battleships in Battleship Cove with my Cub Scout troop in like 1993 or something. I've always known of Fall River's reputation as a tough city and a narcotics hub, but this is the first time I've investigated the street organizations of the city. There are definitely some similarities between Fall River and Lowell, and honestly the Bay State as a whole. This particular viewer that brought this to my attention was talking specifically about the Asian boys, which right off the bat struck me as kind of funny. Asian boys and Fall River? Really? I wouldn't have put the two together. I didn't think Fall River had any type of Southeast Asian population. At least that's not what they're known for. I've always known Fall River and New Bedford to be very, very Portuguese. My ex-girlfriend, who was from Falmouth, used to call New Bedford New Beige. She was also Portuguese. There's tons of Portuguese in my home city of Gloucester, but nothing like the South Coast. In a 2018 census, 46% of Fall River's population was still Portuguese, making it by far the largest concentration in the state. Apparently, there's a small Southeast Asian population in Fall River, though. While the city is still majority working class Portuguese and other white ethnic groups, there's a sizable Hispanic population, about 11% of the population. African Americans make up around 6%, and Asians make up around 2% of the total population in the city. That's obviously a very small percentage, but they're big enough to have built a Buddhist temple and a Cambodian community center in the city of Fall River. This is obviously much different than Lowell, Mass, which has the highest concentration of Cambodians on the entire east coast of America. I actually read recently that Lowell is considered the center of Southeast Asian culture on the east coast. Out of Lowell's 105,000 so residents, an estimated 20,000 Cambodians are living in the city. So basically almost one out of every five citizens from Lowell is of Cambodian descent. I don't think that people who even live in Massachusetts are aware of this. I've gone and walked around the area where they have the Cambodia town sign in Lowell. I really love Lowell. I think it's a really cool old mill city. Basically through the 70s and 80s, millions of people in Southeast Asia were displaced from war, famine, and disease. The United States accepted hundreds of thousands of these refugees into the country. The majority ended up in California cities like Long Beach, Stockton, and Fresno, but a lot also ended up in Lowell, Mass. The best answer I can come up with is that Lowell was a very depressed industrial city by the late 70s and had access of affordable housing for the refugees. So an attempt to try to condense this time-wise and simplify it, when the Southeast Asians came to these cities in California, they were discriminated and picked on by the locals. By this time, there were already formed Latino and black organizations in these cities and they did not take too kindly to the new Asian population. Longos 13, a feared Latino crew in Long Beach, especially terrorized these newcomers. To defend themselves, they began to click up. I'm not 100% sure there are varying accounts of how this happened, but the Cambodian and other Asians that grouped up to defend themselves against the Longo split into two major groups. Sometime in the mid to late 80s, TRG or Tiny Rascals formed, and then a little later another group formed the Asian Boys or ABZ. Initially they worked together to fight off the Longos, but it didn't take long before they were beefing with one another. It was a similar situation in Lowell, Mass, with Latino crews already existing in the city before the Cambodias arrived. It wasn't as intense as it was in California, but it did still exist. Because California and Massachusetts had the two biggest Cambodian populations in the country, there were a lot of similarities. Sometimes if guys got into trouble in Cali, they would take off and go stay with family or friends in Lowell, and vice versa. This meant that a lot of the mentality from California was making its way to the Bay State. 
And honestly, the more videos I make on this channel and research it, it's kind of crazy how much California politics have influenced Massachusetts. TRG and ABZ are two of the more active groups in Massachusetts currently. Of course, they've morphed and they aren't carbon copies of the California relatives, but they originated there. I honestly don't know how connected these groups are nationally. I think the Asian boys and LOL definitely had connections throughout the country and they were running a pretty organized operation. They were receiving mass quantities of narcotics through the mail, plus they were trafficking weapons and mechanisms to enhance certain weapons. Allegedly. I've made a couple of videos about the LOL scene and the big federal RICO case last summer. Like I said, the feds alleged that they were trafficking mass quantities of narcotics and weapons. It's also alleged that they were laundering their illicit proceeds through a record company. I've heard people say in my comments that that's not true, it was a legit rap label. But I think it illustrates the organization of the group in LOL compared to the other street organizations in the Bay State. The thing that brought the authorities' attention to them, and it's pretty much always the same thing, is the violence. Before the investigation began, there was like 11 incidents in a few months time period. Retaliatory going back and forth between crews and it was putting the residents of Lowell in fear. This is what always brings the authorities attention. As long as people are dealing and not committing the violence, they're more likely going to be able to avoid the authorities or at least for a longer period of time. As far as I know, they're still awaiting trial for the big RICO case. It's a similar situation in Lynn Mass. I made a video about it recently. There's been an uptick in violence in the North Shore city. Apparently TIG is one of the main groups involved in the violence. Now in Lynn and Revere, primarily the Shirley Ave area, East Boston and Chelsea, it's its own little sphere of influence. While there are TRG and Asian boys and the guys that wear red along with other groups in this area, I don't know how connected they are to the guys in Lowell or down on the South Coast. That's the thing. There really isn't a lot of info about these groups out there. I know that traditionally a lot of Asian cultures can be kind of secretive and private, and I think this is a reason why there's not much known about these groups or their origins in the Bay State. If you weren't already aware of them, it's almost like they don't exist, even though they are some of the most active groups in the state. The stuff that's going on in Lynn is really underreported, along with last year's RICO case in Lowell. I had to go digging just to find out about the situations for myself. It's not just out there. A lot of these groups started off primarily Cambodian or Southeast Asian, but over the years they've morphed into multiracial organizations. TIG definitely is a group of mixed demographics as well as the Asian boys. When I was researching the Asian boys in Fall River area, the majority of high profile incidents that occurred were with numbers who were not of Cambodian descent. This is why I started digging into the demographics of Fall River, because I was like, how did the Asian boys set up shop in Fall River to begin with? Are there even any Cambodians or Southeast Asians there in the city? Like I previously said, there is a small population enough to warrant a Buddhist temple and a Cambodian community center. I'm guessing the Asian boys in the city were probably started by someone from Lowell or Cali who was already down. Like in the other cities, they probably formed originally to protect themselves from already established groups in the city that were possibly going to pick on the newcomers because like the other cities that Cambodians came to in America, Fall River already had their own street crews set up. There's an old school homegrown crew from Fall River that goes back decades called DBZ or the Dover Street Boys. I found an article dated back to 1997 about them, so they've been around for a little while. If you can add anything about their history, please hit up the comments. There are other Latino national groups in the city as well, like the Kings, a special set called the Lion Tribe, La Familia, and Mafioso. Most Asian boys' cliques rep with the color blue, so on that side of the banner in Fall River, there's the 360. I'll just use the first initial C, the 360 Cs. Then there's the Evil East Side Asian Boys, and OST, or Original Street Thugs, they're like a subset of the Asian Boys, and a viewer who, shout out, he gave me a lot of insight into the Fall River Streets. He said that OST might originally come from the Lowell Original Street Boys, but he wasn't completely sure about that. Then on the opposite side of the spectrum, the red side, there's the OB, which can stand either for Oriental or Original, and you guys know what the B stands for. And then there's the CJG, the CJ standing for Cambodian Junior, and there's some sort of sub subset of the OBs apparently. The guys who use the Star of David as their insignia also have a presence in the city. Sorry if it's hard to follow, I have to talk somewhat in code for it to get by YouTube's ad guidelines. I'm getting better at it, we'll see if this video gets approved. But I know it can be annoying listening to this at home and saying like, why can't he just say the word? Now like I said, the majority of the high profile cases involving Asian boys in Fall River, the perpetrators weren't of Asian descent. In one case where an Asian boy got caught retaliating against a rival for a previous attack, he was white. Then another young man who was arrested for a similar crime was Hispanic. I've actually noticed there's a decent amount of Hispanic Asian boys in Fall River, which seems kind of like an oxymoron. But like I said, these groups have morphed from racially segregated to being multiracial. 
I've also noticed that the Asian boys in Fall River go hard with the face tattoos. It's not like they're trying to hide their affiliations. The Latino Asian boy that I talked about was arrested, was later killed a few years later in New Bedford. Apparently, it was retaliation from the past, even though he allegedly had moved on from the life and had a young child. This is important for any younger people watching this video. Not that many young people watch my channel. But a choice that you make at 13, 14, or 15 can follow you your whole life. Even if you make positive change and turn your life around, your past can still come back and haunt you. Especially if you stay around the same area that you are active in. It's just sad. It's like this in countless Bay State cities. It's almost like out of sight, out of mind. While I see leaders and officials combating the symptoms of these street organizations, I still don't see anyone doing anything to treat the root cause. Why are there so many disenfranchised youths in these cities that think it's a good choice to join these organizations? I just don't know why something can't be done to give these kids more positive options. A lot of these cities in the Bay State face the exact same problems and challenges, whether it's Fall River, Lynn, Brockton, Lawrence, Worcester, etc. Underperforming schools, sluggish economies, lack of services, and a little sense of community. Fall River is definitely a tough city. I'd love to learn more about it. And if you want to contact me through my email or leave a comment, please do. All I really knew prior to starting my channel was from what I saw in the Chris Herring documentary that I've seen a million times at Danvis Cab or meeting Fall River kids in detox who would always go, Fall River, you know. Another particular brazen crime that I saw when I was looking into the city was a few years ago, a guy was coming out of court and in broad daylight, 4.30 in the afternoon, was taken out in the middle of the street allegedly by a 19-year-old assailant. The 19-year-old said it was retaliation for a previous incident. The suspected perpetrator looked super young even for a 19-year-old and it reinforced to me that Fall River is a dangerous city. I want to give a quick shout out on a more positive note. I want to give a quick shout out to a rapper from Fall River that I like. And you guys should definitely go out and check out his music and support him. Dope Boy Da Vinci. Like I said, if you guys want further content on Fall River, let me know in the comments. I've been getting a lot of requests lately from people wanting me to do videos about particular cities. So hit up the comments so I can gauge what people want to see. Brockton, Worcester, and New Bedford, besides Fall River, are cities that people most commonly requested and the ones that I'm interested in covering. I'm just looking to gauge from you guys like what the popular consensus wants. So I'm still not 100% sure how connected the Asian boys in Fall River and throughout the South Coast all the way up to Attleboro are, or how connected they are to the cliques in Lowell, Mass, but it's very interesting and I appreciate the viewer bringing this to my attention. I was not previously aware that they even had a presence in Fall River. I thought it was mostly Latino organizations or other nationally syndicated groups in the city. I am curious if all these groups in Mass are somehow connected to one another, or also for that matter if there's a connection between Massachusetts and California still. Because like I said, TRG and AB who were originally both primarily Cambodian and began in California are now two of the most active groups in Massachusetts. They now look and operate much differently, but they both came from the same place originally. Massachusetts has become a bit of a melting pot of these street organizations imported from other places like California, Illinois, and New York. I'm not trying to glorify this stuff at all. I'm just simply trying to document it. There's a lot of people out there that are not aware of this side of Massachusetts. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. People really seem to like when I do the Asian street organization content. I really do try to shed light on all the different groups in Massachusetts and not just focus on one entirely. I'm simply trying to document stuff where I saw a giant void on YouTube. And a lot of you guys seem to like it. The channel keeps growing faster and faster. Shout out to all my viewers, subscribers, and supporters. Someone left a comment recently about my channel being very inclusive. That made me feel really happy. I do feel like we're building a bit of a community here. And the viewers add so much to this channel with the comments, requests, and the people that email me and help me with these videos. So thank you guys, really, very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. It's been a rough week. My younger daughter's mother has been in the hospital and I've been breaking myself chasing these clams around, but I wanted to have something for you guys this weekend, so I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. Make sure to hit up the comments, let me know what city you guys want me to do a video about, but most importantly, you guys know, make good choices, make good decisions, take good care of yourselves, your family, your friends, your fellow human beings. Try to have a good day. I'll talk to you guys soon. God bless.